Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. And this morning, our scripture reading comes from Revelation chapter 1. And I will be reading verses 4 to, through 8, which is the second portion of Revelation. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. If everyone is there, would you please say amen? Amen. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So then faith cometh by hearing. And the hearing by the word of God. You may be seated. We live in a day of conflicting claims for various religions and the desire to be tolerant of them all. But they can't all be true. But if it's true for you, then it's true. Yet how do we as Christians determine what we believe? And we regard Jesus Christ as our faithful witness. Jesus Christ is the only religious leader who has risen from the dead. So when you read John's description of the vision, keep in mind that his words aren't just good advice. His words are truths from the King of Kings. And so don't just read his words for their interesting and amazing portrayal of the future. Let the truth about Christ penetrate your life, deepen your faith in Christ, and strengthen your commitment to follow him no matter what the cost. And this passage of scripture today is about the great announcement to the churches, the great revelation to God's servants. And the seven churches are representative of all the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the world. But for now, it's about the great announcement to the seven churches in Asia. And there were four such announcements being proclaimed to the churches of the world. Thus, my subject for this morning is the great announcement to the churches. Verses 4 through 5 says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia... Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And so the first announcement to the churches is that grace and peace are yours. And as a church, we must know that we can experience grace and peace. And grace means the favor and blessings of God. It means receiving from God what we do not deserve. It means that God takes an active role in our lives and that he looks after us. He takes care of us. It means that God provides all the good and beneficial things of life for us, whether they be physical, material, or spiritual. 
Now, we don't deserve the grace of God, but God loves us, and because he loves us, he showers us with his grace, his favor, his blessings. Now, peace means that we can have peace with God and with people, and that we no longer have to feel that God is far away from us or that God is hovering over us, watching our every move we, uh, to show us what we are doing wrong. God isn't evil, and neither is he looking for every chance he can get to condemn and punish us. God seeks only one thing from us, and that's peace. But peace also means that we no longer have to be divided separated and discriminated against and neither do we have to be fighting and warring and stealing and killing each other because we can now have peace we can have peace with God and we can have peace with each other this is the first great declaration to the church the first great announcement and the great gifts of grace and peace are now available to us but I want you to notice is where the peace comes from because it isn't found among men yeah. it isn't found among people and neither is God's grace God's favor or the great gift of peace found on earth grace and peace come only from heaven grace and peace come only from God and his spirit and his son the Lord Jesus Christ grace and peace come only from the eternal and unchangeable God I want you to notice how God is described and he's described as him who is and who was and who is to come God is God was, God is to come. That is, God is eternal and unchangeable. He's the infinite God, the immeasurable God, the exceedingly great God. He's the only living and true God. And he's the same today as he was yesterday. And he will be the same in the ages to come. And this means the most wonderful thing. It means that God has infinite power and knowledge. God knows that we need his grace. He knows that we need his care and provision. And he knows that we need his peace. And only God has the power to give us grace and peace. All we have to do is go to him. All we have to do is go to God who is the source of grace and peace. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Grace and peace come from the Holy Spirit. And did you notice that the Holy Spirit is called the seven spirits? The number seven in the Bible simply means completeness, fullness, and perfection. Thus, the seven spirits means the Holy Spirit in all of his fullness. And I think you all really need to get this because this is one of the symbols that you're going to need to remember as we travel through the book of Revelation. The Holy Spirit is before the throne of God in all of his perfection and fullness. Therefore, as a believer, you are to find grace and peace in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God who lives within you, the believer, in order to fill you, the believer, with the grace and peace of God. Therefore, our duty is to learn to walk in the Spirit. Our duty is to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with God's grace and peace. And grace and peace come from Jesus Christ. And this is clearly seen in John chapter 14, verse Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It is Christ who brought the grace and peace of God to earth. And so grace and peace to you from the one who is and was and is coming. 
and from the seven spirits before his throne. Verses 5 through 6 says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The second announcement to the churches is that Jesus Christ is the great Savior, the great Redeemer. And in these two verses, five great things are declared about Jesus Christ. First, Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. Jesus is the one person we can depend on and we can trust what Jesus tells us. Jesus Christ came from God out of heaven itself to reveal the truth to us. The truth about God, the truth about us, and the truth about our world. And what Jesus Christ has revealed can be trusted. Because he is the faithful witness. In John chapter 8 verse 14, Jesus said, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from and where I'm going. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. And the second great thing declared about Jesus is that Jesus is the first to arise from the dead. That is, Jesus is the first to arise from the dead who never again had to die. And the word firstborn means to be first in rank, to be supreme and preeminent in the resurrection. Of all the people who have arisen from the dead, Jesus Christ is supreme. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Therefore, it's his resurrection that's the supreme and preeminent resurrection. All other people arise because he arose. And all believers will arise to live with God eternally because Jesus arose and conquered death for us. And because he arose, we too shall arise if we believe that he died and arose for us. But we must believe. Keep in mind now that the revelation is written to believers only. And so Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. Jesus is the first to arise from the dead. And the third great thing declared about Jesus Christ is that Jesus Christ is the picture, of, is the prince of the kings of the earth. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead and exalted to the right hand of God's throne. And it is Christ and Christ alone who has been given the seat of sovereign rule over the earth. Christ alone has been given absolute authority over the earth. The world may seem chaotic and the problems too enormous to be handled, but Jesus Christ is in control and he's able to handle it all. And you might legitimately ask, why doesn't God just go ahead and come and straighten out this chaotic mess and the evil of this world? And God tells us in 2 Peter 3, and nine, as plainly as human language can say it, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord isn't slow in doing what he promised, the way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with you because he doesn't want anyone to be lost. He just wants you to change your heart and life. Very simply, Jesus Christ is delaying his return so that more people can be saved and live eternally with God. But someday, and from the weight of the evidence, the day will be soon. Jesus Christ is returning to take over the rule of the world, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings,
kings and lord of lords and potentate means somebody with great power or influence especially a ruler and Jesus is the blessed and only potentate and Jesus and Jesus alone is going to rule and bring the reign of righteousness to earth and Jesus and Jesus alone is the prince of the kings of the earth and so Jesus Christ is the faithful witness Jesus is the first to arise from the dead Jesus is the prince of the kings of the earth and the fourth great declaration about Jesus Christ is that Christ has redeemed us. Jesus loves us and he has washed us from our sins in his own blood. And in the Greek the word love is in the present tense which means that Jesus Christ always loves us and he loves us today just as he has loved us in the past. And in the Greek the word washed lusanti means to be loosed, set free and released from sin. But how did the blood of Jesus Christ set us free from sin? And we are set free from sin because Jesus Christ took our sins and he died for our sins. When Jesus Christ was here on earth as a man, he lived a sinless and perfect life. Therefore, he was able to present himself as the ideal and perfect man before God. And he was able to die as the ideal and perfect sacrifice. Jesus was able to take our sins. He was able to take the guilt and the judgment of our sins upon himself and bear the punishment for us. Jesus was the ideal and perfect man. Therefore, God is able to accept his death as the ideal and perfect sacrifice. The point is this. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He actually took our sins off of us. He removed them and he died for them. Therefore, as believers, we are freed and loosed from sin. Our sin has been removed from us. Thus, we stand before God, free of sin and acceptable to God. But you must remember how you were freed from sin. And it's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins it's the shed blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross his dying for our sins that frees us from sin the sacrifice of Jesus Christ has given to all believers the privileges that have belonged to ancient Israel remember the great things declared about Christ Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. Jesus Christ is the first to arise from the dead. Jesus is the prince of the kings of the earth. Christ has redeemed us. And the fifth great thing declared about Jesus Christ is that Christ has exalted us. He has actually made us kings and priests. Jesus Christ has made believers to be priests and kings now in both witness and worship. And by kings is meant a kingdom or a rule. As kings and priests, we will have some authority and responsibility that involves overseeing, management, supervision, and governing. 1 Corinthians 6, 2 says, Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? As believers, we won't be in heaven doing nothing. We will be ruling and reigning with Christ. We will oversee and administer the affairs of the universe for Christ throughout eternity. But God didn't just make us kings. He made us priests. And being priests means that we have open access into God's presence at any time. 
But our personal identity in Christ must be established in our hearts because we have been given kingdom authority and we're to minister as priests to the Lord. We're to use our spiritual authority in the name of Jesus and intercede as priests in prayer for others. Therefore, as believers, we no longer need human priests or mediators because we ourselves are made priests before God all by Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5 says, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. As believers, we no longer have to go through a human priest. We are to now offer our own prayers and praises to God. We are to offer our own worship, our own thanksgiving, our own offerings to God who made us a kingdom, priest for his father forever. And yes, he's on his way. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Verse 7 says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will soon mourn because of him. Even so, amen. The return of Jesus Christ will be an actual event. It will be personal and it will be visible. Yes. Jesus Christ is coming again and everybody will recognize who he is. And it won't matter whether the evening news covers it or not because the event will be so incredible that everyone will see it. Thus the third announcement to the churches is behold, look. Christ comes. And this is the theme of Revelation, the coming of Jesus Christ again, and the justice and judgment which he is to execute upon the earth. Jesus Christ is coming again. And when he comes, this verse says two things will happen. First, every eye will see him. The glory of God is so bright and so full of light that it actually shines brighter than the sun. And so when Jesus Christ returns, there will be a display of his glory that will surround the earth and the reflection of the Lord's glory will be seen by every eye. Remember also that there will be an innumerable host of angels and believers who are accompanying Christ back to earth. The idea is that there will be so many angels and believers that they will surround the earth. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 32 says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Whatever the case, Christ in all his glory and majesty is going to return to earth and when he returns, every eye will see him. Amen. And the second thing this verse says will happen when Jesus comes is that every person who has rejected Christ and crucified him will wail and mourn because of him. Every person who has rejected Jesus will moan and howl. They will scream and cry. They will weep. And this refers not only to those who crucified Christ, but to all the enemies of Christ. Matthew chapter Chapter 24 verse 30 says, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Every person who has rebelled against Jesus Christ will see Jesus Christ and they will cry out in anguish because they have cursed Christ. They have rejected and ignored Christ. They have neglected and rebelled against Christ. And they have opposed Christ.
Christ. People don't believe Jesus Christ. And so they reject his claim to be the son of God and that he came from God out of heaven to save the world. Most people accept that Jesus Christ was a great man and that he was one of the greatest religious teachers of all time, but they reject his deity. People just believe that they can be good enough to become acceptable to God on their own. Therefore, they reject the fact that Jesus Christ had to die for the sins of the world and the result is going to be catastrophic. When people see Jesus Christ return to earth, they will then know that he is exactly who he claimed to be. The Messiah, the anointed one of God, the Savior of the world. Hallelujah! They will know that God does love the world and that he loves it so much that he actually sent his son to die for our sins. But when Christ returns, it isn't the idea of salvation. It's that of wailing and mourning and of crying out because of the judgment that Jesus Christ is bringing with him. Jesus Christ, the Lord of the universe, will be returning in glory to execute justice upon all who have rejected him and have worked evil upon the earth. And he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Revelations 22 20 says, he who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Look, behold, Jesus is coming with the clouds and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people of the earth will cry loudly because of him. And yes, whether you believe it or not, this will happen. Verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The fourth announcement to the churches is that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. In this verse, three great descriptions are given of Christ. First, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. And Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet and Omega is the last letter. And this declares that Jesus is everything from A to Z. Thus Jesus is in control of human history from beginning to end. That is Jesus Christ is the beginning and the ending of all there is. Jesus began all things and he will end all things. And all things find their purpose, meaning, and significance in Jesus Christ. Man, the world, and history, no matter how chaotic and disjointed life may seem, all things are under the control of Jesus Christ. And this exhortation, this urging, this advice is clear. We must put our trust in Jesus Christ and cast our lives upon him. And when we do, we receive the gift, the great gift of God spoken about in verse 4. We receive the grace of God's care and provision. We receive the great gift of peace. And we become safe and secure for eternity. The second great description given of Christ Jesus is that Christ is the Lord who is, who was, and who is to come. That is, Jesus Christ is eternal and unchangeable. Today, he's the same person he has always been, and he will always be the same person. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is a great message for us. This is the great announcement. Jesus Christ loves us all, and he loves us as much as he loved those who lived when he first came to earth. And his love is unchangeable. But what we must remember is that so are his justice and judgment. If we trust Christ, we will know his love. But if we reject Christ, we will know his wrath. Thus the third great description given of Christ Jesus is that Jesus Christ is the Almighty. 
And the word almighty means the all controller, the all ruler. Jesus Christ is the one who controls all things. And Jesus Christ is the one who rules over all things. Amen. Jesus Christ controls and rules in the whole universe. This means that Jesus Christ possesses all power. He's omnipotent. He's able to do anything. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things consist Jesus controls everything the universe and every being within the universe. He controls the atoms, the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons of space and matter. Jesus controls every circumstance, every event, and every happening throughout the universe. Think about what I'm saying. Because Jesus Christ is the Almighty. And this means the most wonderful thing. It means that no matter what you go through, if you belong to Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. All things will be worked out for your good. Amen. Romans 8 28 says and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. As a believer, Jesus Christ will control the circumstances and he will twist them to the good of the believer. Amen. And as a believer, nothing Absolutely nothing can snatch you out from under the control of Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 verses 28 through 29 says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my father's hand. To conclude this message, Christ as a mighty warrior helps us, the believers in the church, to whom this book was written, understand that we have the ultimate warrior fighting on our side. We have Christ himself and Christ rules over all and Christ gave four announcements to John to the seven churches and these four announcements are to every believer. If you believe grace and peace are yours. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the great Savior, the great Redeemer you're saved. If you believe, you behold you watch for the coming of Christ and you believe that Christ is the almighty God. One day Jesus Christ is returning and those who have abused the earth in his absence and mismanaged his world will all be swept aside. Only those who have loved his appearing, only those who love and acknowledge him as the rightful king will enjoy the blessings of his kingdom. Amen. And God the Father is the eternal Lord and ruler of the past, the present, and the future. Amen. Without him, you have nothing that's eternal. You have nothing that will change your life. You have nothing that can save you from sin. Is the Lord your reason for living? Is the Lord the Alpha and the Omega of your life? If he is, honor him as such. Honor the one who is the beginning and the end of all existence, all wisdom, and all power. Honor Jesus, letting the truth about Christ penetrate your life. Deepen your faith in Christ and strengthen your commitment to follow him no matter what the cost. Amen? Amen. Can we praise God for his holy and precious word? And this word is for believers only. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.